Hey everyone, I'm Wendy McSwain. Welcome to A Real Life Moment. This is a podcast series presented by Real Life Church to offer you a quick moment of advice, inspiration, or simply a conversation we'd love to share with you. Today, I'm excited to have Nick Grice, our Engage Missions Director, and Todd Alwine from Around the Corner Ministries here with us. We're talking about engaging our neighbors by going around the corner. Hey, Nick. Hey, Todd. How are you today? Wendy, I'm good. How about you? Doing pretty good. So glad to have Todd here with us today to share some insight on how to reach our neighbors with the gospel. Yeah. So, Todd, just a little bit of background. I know you're leading a course with uh, Nick right now online mm -hmm. where people can use your book. And I have it right here going around yeah. the corner. Yeah. Um, been perusing that. So tell us just a minute how we kind of got connected with you and then we'll go through some questions. So um, we started ministry in 2016 and, and over that course of time, my wife particularly, she's the spiritual giant in our ministry. Um, and Nick knows that, so he don't need to say anything, but it's true. She wrote, she wrote a study that developed around the corner. And as she wrote it, um it, it, we got it printed and so nick of all people maybe a year or two ago I, right nick uh, something like that yeah. or, or made an order so we always get excited about orders so i reached out to nick and said thanks for the order and his his title of engage pastor engaging pastor i love that so we talk about that so we automatically had a relationship going uh, we had a conversation going so like-minded you guys have got a great guy nick grice and doing what he does. He really believes the gospel and, and lives it. So we met down sometime after that. So we've just had a, a relationship, friendship since then, just like-minded with the gospel. So that's how it all began. That's great. So Nick, um, now we're going through a course with some of our, I guess, church members and different people from the community. Um, and we thought it, we ought to have a conversation about it, about this going around the corner. I think a lot of us have been really isolated. <laughs> Um, and I know that some of my neighbors are the pe only people I've been interacting with um, over the last year. So this feels more important than ever. Yes, absolutely. With When COVID hit, I know I remember Todd made an interesting statement, you know, going around the corner seems so appropriate now because that's about as far as some people are willing to go these days. So, you know, if, if you're at home, we're quarantining, we're doing this thing. Um, it's especially important to reach out this during this time and make sure our neighbors are okay and checking and, and meeting on their phys checking on their uh, physical needs and making sure those are met. Um, but also just checking in to see um, how they're doing spiritually and um, emotionally, um, because we've talked about just the impact it's had on marriages and people losing jobs and they get down and out and just, um, you know, psychologically the impact it can have is, is uh, critical too. So people can be literally um, right across the street from you and going through the deepest, darkest time in their life. And you may not even be aware of it. And that's just sad that we could be disconnected um, from someone who we, we have the hope of the gospel to offer them and the love of Jesus. And, and we're just not connecting with them completely unaware. So um, I think it's really important now that we become intentional about, um, you know, connecting with those folks and just checking in on them and, um, you know, start with the houses around you. Um, going around the corner has been extremely insightful for me because it's just it's taking the Bible and then it's just taking real practical steps on how we go about doing that. Um, where do you start and then where do you go from there? Um, so, so Todd and Sheila have got some really good material um, on how to get people to prompt in that direction and then, you know, to just make it happen because we can all kind of you know, say, hey, well, I know what I ought to do, but then you're just not doing it. So, um, yeah, it prompts you to take those steps. Mm -hmm. So why should we kind of go around the corner instead of just, you know, be comfortable in our space we've created and uh, don't interfere in our neighbor's lives? I think that's where a lot of people are. They might not even know that, you know, they just close the garage door when they come home at night. And uh, why is it important that we reach out to our neighbors? I think it is because, um, we believe that God put you in that neighborhood with a greater purpose than just going to your backyard or living, working, or playing there. So we talk about and believe in scripture that um, what if we all believed from scripture that God had ordained that even our boundaries, Acts 17. And so we believe that he's put you around people that um, 
you need to go on mission for. So I don't think it's coincidence. And we have story after story of people that have moved into neighborhoods and started seeing great opportunities to make a difference right where they are. So hopefully, um, if people will catch the vision of, wow, God, send me the places that you want me to go, as it says in Luke 2 or Luke 10, uh, 1 through 3, he says, I'm going to send you, sending out the 70, I'm going to send you to where I want to come. So we believe he's put you in places that he wants to come there, and he's going to come through you because faith mm-hmm. comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So we truly believe that it's important to go to the people right around you because we believe God's put you there for that purpose. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. All right. So it's important that we're there because God's placed us there. What kind of approaches or techniques can we take um, to reach out to our neighbors? And I, I'm sure the Bible has something to say about that. Yeah, one of the things great about Nick, Nick could answer this too, because he knows he's heard me talk through this. We, we believe that one of the greatest things to do, great methodologies, we're very trendy people. So we're always looking for something new. And I would say this, if it's all human, what we're trying to do, it's just going to be a matter of time till it stops working. So when I talk about techniques or I talk about approaches, hopefully I'll say something like this. It has to be spiritually led. It's got to be a spiritual, biblical, simple, practical way to do it. So some of the approaches we would say is, first of all, as we've said, you got to believe God has put you there. I mean, faith is a big issue, but we're trusting God to say, God, I believe you put me here. That's huge. The second piece would be, just start praying for the people around you. We say all the time, we talk a lot about prayer, but we don't spend a lot of times really waiting on God and praying. Acts 1, Jesus told his disciples, um, wait for the spirit to come. So they waited and prayed. So learning to pray by name for the people around you gives you God's heart for those people. And then when you get God's heart for the people, you don't have to do much after that. And then when you start seeing some physical needs rise up, like what we talked about earlier, you just help meet them. Um, look for ways to to meet them practically but a, but a physical need usually can lead into a spiritual conversation mm. and so you, those are the approaches that we walk through that we believe they're all spirit led but they're all biblical so they don't have a, a a shelf life on them and so those approaches if people will take them they'll meet other believers and and they can all join in together because it's if I'm in a neighborhood and, and I meet another believer in my neighborhood through prayer walking or being out, um, just out praying, and they say they're a believer and find out they truly know Christ, and, and I ask them, would you join us in helping us uh, influence our neighborhood for Christ and share Christ with them? And they'll say, what do you want me to do? And I said, just start praying. I believe God's put you here, but just start praying for the people around you. And if they say no, they don't want to do that, so I'll usually put them on my, they probably are not a Christian category. Hmm. So you know, pretty practical ways, but we want them to be biblical, but we want them to be spiritual, meaning, God, these are the things that you say to do, and um, we want you to get the credit for them, so that's really where we go with that. Yeah, I, I want to piggyback off that, because I know we talked uh, in our session, too, um, last week and this week about a, a real practical step people can take is to, to, to draw a diagram of maybe your street or just those maybe five, 10 houses that are immediately around you and literally draw them. And as Todd mentioned, as you're praying, maybe you meet those folks, get to know their name, then you just fill in that house with the with the, the spouse's name or maybe their child's name, even their dog's name. And then you start praying for them by name um, over the next few weeks. And as you meet, you know, those other neighbors, you just kind of fill in the blanks. And, and as he said, you know, maybe they mention something in a conversation as you're out prayer walking or you're just out spending time on your street and they, they mention their, their dad has an illness or they've, you know, they're considering, you know, moving on a job or whatever. So you offer to pray for them for those type things and then follow up with them, you know, down the road. How, how's your dad doing or how did that job interview go? Or, you know, they, they mention a specific need. So you say, hey, next week, you know, mention you're going to be doing this project. Let me um, set some time aside and, and I'll be glad to bring some tools over and I can help you out with that. So there, there's just different ways. If they're going through a really rough time, they, they've lost a loved one or something like that, set some time aside to say, hey, can we just grab some coffee sometime and sit down and chat and, and just let them kind of, you know, you're just going to sit down and listen to them. Because I think, especially for me, because I'm 
I'm, I'm more of a talker. I, I have to train myself to sometimes let the other person speak, you know, be quiet because sometimes people just want to talk. So I think those are some initial steps you can take, but definitely always, like Todd said, you start with prayer every single time. Um, mm -hmm. That's a really key critical component of being effective. I think that's something anybody can do. You know, I might think, well, I'm not as outgoing as Nikki is. I don't, I don't want to just walk up to somebody's door and ask them to dinner or, you know, invite them over to my house. Maybe that's something I've never done before. But I, if, if a person's a believer, I can't imagine that they would say, I won't pray for somebody. Exactly. Um, and I know that just uh, things that I've gone through, if I knew that somebody was praying for me, what a difference that made. So, I, you know, when I think about turning that around, if I, even if they don't ever know it, uh, if I know something's going on in the life of a neighbor because I've taken one step, maybe I just walked by and realized more cars are there than usual. Uh, something must be going on. And I just lift that family up in prayer. I mean, I really believe it makes a difference. And if, if they knew it, it would make a difference in their hearts too. Sure. And we believe too that, and we've, we've experienced that. We had a neighbor, we had a good friend. We were praying for their, his daughter in California at the time. She was not a believer. And um, he was just broken that. Uh, he wanted her to know Christ. And really, as believers, don't we want people to know Christ? And um, so as we were praying for her that night in California, at the end of the prayer, we had this conversation, really, my wife was talking about it and saying, really, we're not just praying for her. We're really praying for somebody around her that knows Jesus to talk to her. And um, pro fam, but that is so true. So we, and then we brought it in, or she really actually brought it in to say, who is living around us that somebody around wherever is praying for them, for somebody to talk to them? So God orchestrates those things. So that's what's so much fun about it. We get to watch God put all the pieces together and we get to enjoy um, the, the opportunities that he puts in front of us. And, and it's just exciting to, to just think that way. And I really like how you said it. It, it all goes back to spiritual things so that God gets the glory because uh, it shouldn't be. And I, you know, I think all of us tend to be like, well, I did this and I did this. And if I hadn't done that, then this, but we need to realize that, you know, God's the one that does the work and we need to stay mm -hmm. humble about it. <laughs> if we do this long enough, we'll stay humble. This way how it happens. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that you notice, um, Todd, in today's culture that makes it difficult to reach our neighbors with the hope of Jesus? Um, how do we persevere through some of those hurdles, some of those things that make it hard to talk to people about Jesus? Yeah, I think, I don't know if they're new, that culture, culture is different today. I mean, so much harder to do church today during COVID. We, we realize that. I think skepticism is real today, and I think it's always has been that way but I think honestly it brings me back to the culture the same and I'm asking me that do I really love God I mean believers really loving God and really loving the Lord in such a way that he is our passion he really is our life and I think that's going to be the what's going to be needed in culture more than anything it's going to be this heart that says do I really love the Lord because I think this is drawing us back into this um it's my heart really about him because I'm not able to go to church and everything's so different now, but I, do I really, really, really love him? So to me, that's a big, big piece that, that helps us transcend because love does stand the test of time and I have no great love at anyone. They lay down his life for his friend. So checking our love for God is, is a part of how to handle that culture and how to really persevere is to bring back to this deal. God, is this something that you want us to do? Because if it's not your mm. mission, I don't want to do it. Right. So, that's what's going to stand the test of time. Lord, we believe you've called us to do this. We're really on mission. We're all, all really all sent. And so we really believe that you've called us to do it. You've given us the spirit to do it. Um, you even say when in Luke 10, when you're going to send the 70 out as sheep among wolves. And we feel that way sometimes. Remember, they came back all intact. And they came back rejoicing. Why? They had seen what God could do. And, and they, they, their name, they were going to heaven. They knew that. But they had really saw God do some amazing things. That's really what stands the test of time. Really um, just watching God answer prayer, watching God use us, and watch us really experience him. Even give us the words to say, even when we didn't know what to say. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's good. Because I, I, I know it can be discouraging when... Uh, you're trying to speak to a neighbor, you know, about the Lord, or even just encourage them. And you feel like you get a lot of negative back. Yeah. Um, 
but I think, you know, if you persevere, you do see how God's working and maybe it takes years to see that. And I think we're seeing that there's a lot of people that are seeing needs they didn't have before and they're looking for help. And so um, I think if we're just sensitive to what God's up to and be faithful to be out there and to be available, it's going to be fun to see what God does with us. Will we be rejected? I have found I've never been rejected, um, but they're rejecting the Lord. So we really want to um, stay out there, love people, but watch God just use us in those contexts, but let him get the credit, let him do the work. I've not saved anyone. The Lord right. does the saving, but it is our responsibility to share. And we want to do that, but we're going to do it in a, in a clear, practical, biblical way, but just in a loving way and um, trust God for it. Yeah, that's really good. So, you know, with the mind, I like that because it helps me think about in inter interactions, you know, having that just be in a loving way that yep. you, you deal with people. And, yeah. um, and I, I think that's important in all our interactions, especially with people who might not be believers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, can you tell us uh, what are some of the values of going through your book, but um, what kind of things will we learn if we, if we read it or if we go through some of this that would prepare us? Cause I, I can really share your testimony and talking to people about the Lord is a, I think one of the biggest struggles that believers have, um, mm -hmm. you know, they feel things in their heart and they know it for themselves, but it, it becomes a hurdle to share it. Sure. I think, I think all believers want other people to know Christ. They're just want somebody else to talk to that. person. Yeah. <laughs> and that seems to be the deal. Nick's really good in, in this already. He's already working that. Um, so, so the benefits would be, first of all, is a, is, a, is a renewed belief in the character of God. God has put us in places not to live for ourselves for him. So that you're, the character of God will really grow as you go into our study. The other thing is you'll really be brought back to uh, understand what it means to have a heart for God uh, and a heart for the people around you. Just really see people, and we call it awareness. We really think you'll see people the way Jesus sees them, like a sheep without a shepherd. So that's really important. You'll become a little bit more sensitive, hopefully, and sensitivity to the Spirit as He prompts you. That's not just a, a, a bad meal. That's something God is, is, is leading you to do. And then you'll also start acting on it, but you'll get better prepared how to. There's In one of our chapters, is um, just talks about some good questions and answers to people that you're talking to, how to tell your story. And, and incorporating the gospel and really how to know that you really shared the gospel. We, we find it encouraging to let people know, well, you really did a good job there because mm -hmm. you, you, you took the components of the gospel and, and, and you did well with it. But you, um, it's just freeing people up, I think, to say, you know what? I've been faithful with the gospel. I leave the results up to him. Right. So that's really important. Those are, the, those are the first four chapters and the last two really deal with what to do with a person that comes to know the Lord and how to grow them up and to get them back to chapter one to get them back out. Because we believe disciple making is reaching and teaching. So those we think all believers should be doing that. So that's just a few benefits of, um, and I guess the greatest benefit I could say is you really get to hear the Lord speak to you because we just use scripture after scripture after scripture, and we'd rather have him speak to you than anything else. Yeah. Getting your knowledge from the right place, right? Yeah. Yeah. His, we got a lot of ideas, but he, he's got truth complete. Yeah. And so that's good. Amen. Hey, Nick, anything you add to that? You good as I do. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I think, people struggle with sharing the gospel because they're, they're fearful. I mean, there's, there's lots of reasons. Some of them are scared that somebody's going to ask them a question. They don't have the answer to. Um, they're scared that they won't get the response from the person that that's ideal. They'll feel like they're rejected. Um, or they may not know exactly what to say. They'll stumble on their words or, or miss uh, share it. But I think the, the thing about it is it's like anything else. It's a practice. So you practice and you get better at it. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you're trying. But <clears throat> we talk about in our uh, share your faith training that we do as a staff at our church. Like, you know, if you don't know all the scripture verses of the Bible and you don't know, have all the answers to their questions, you know, that's OK, because you have the answers to to your story. And people can argue and dispute what the scriptures say in the Bible all day long. 
but nobody can argue your story and how God has impacted your life and the influence he's made and the difference he's made in your life. So you can always go back to that um, mm -hmm. and just share your testimony. You know, and a lot of people will spend a ton of time on all the things they've done in their past. And, and that, that does need to be shared so you can relate with people to a certain point. But people really, if we're going to convert people, they want to know, hey, what's the benefit of, of this faith you're trying to share with me? Yeah. So what's share with them, yeah. what, what has God done in your life? What kind of differences has he made? What, what gets you excited about Jesus? And, mm -hmm. and that's what you want to share with people. And see, but you just got to start somewhere. And I think when you start, like Todd's mentioning, you got to get God's heart uh, for other people and see that um, they're like sheep without a shepherd, that they're lost. Um, and, and the benefit of having Christ in their life, um, is, is maybe not even what they realize, but it's what they need. So you want to just kind of, we don't want to force anybody, but I love the word nudge, you know, can you mm -hmm. nudge somebody closer to Jesus? And, uh, I went to a conference, uh, this past year and a guy, he's a pastor out of, um, California. And uh, he's a great guy. He loves the Lord and he's real passionate about outreach. He actually started a ministry called Organic Outreach. And he has been praying for his own father for over 40 years. And, wow. and so that was like, I'm sitting there astounded at this pastor of this large church in California who own, who's running and operating an outreach ministry and his own dad hadn't saved. It just kind of blew my mind. But he talked about how 40 years ago, you know, his dad was so... Uh, and opposed to even hearing anything about the Lord and to now 40 years later you know he'll ask to pray for him and that kind of stuff so so if you want to use this spectrum if you will of getting somebody kind of closer to the Lord he, he's watched his own father kind of progress you know one a step baby steps closer to Jesus mm -hmm. all along the way so it's not getting discouraged either when you don't get that response that you kind of desire like we all want to share the gospel and see this person surrender their heart to Christ on the spot. And that just rarely happens. So I think going into it with the reality of, you know, I may not see this person saved. I may be planting a seed or I may be watering a seed, but you're still doing the work of the Lord. You're still sending mm -hmm. the gospel out. And, yeah. and you're just, like I said, you're nudging people to take one step closer to Jesus. And if you do that, then that's honoring what the great commission's called us to do. And, and you're striving for that, but mm -hmm. we do our part and leave the results up, up to the Lord. And that's encouraging. That's good. Yeah, man. That's all good. That's, I was going to ask next, um, what kind of encouragement do you have? And I think you just encouraged us. <laughs> it's just small steps. Small mm -hmm. steps. And, the, um, and, and what I love about that and Nick's tied to it, the Lord causes the increase, you know, so that's really what we're after. Some water, some soap, uh, but the Lord causes salvation. So we just rest in that. That's a great place to be. That's great. Y'all have anything else you want to share this this afternoon? I don't. I don't you're a great question. So yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, I, I don't have anything. That was good. Nick just, he nailed it. So I'm just stepping down after that. That was awesome. <laughs> he wrapped it up for us, didn't he? Super. He did. Well, he nailed it. It's, it's good teamwork. Um, but, you know, I've learned a lot from reading the Going Around the Corner book. And so that's the other thing. No matter if you're doing it, you know, there's always more to learn. Um, and it's like Todd said, there's no one size fits all solution to how to share the gospel. Um, I know our pastor said it before pastor Mike said, you know, the, the methods may change, but the message never will. So, you know, the, the message always has been and always will be what it is. The hope that's only found in Jesus mm -hmm. and in your life to him. Um, but the way we get that message out will change. So there's, you know, techniques and approaches uh, may change, but that message has got to stay the same. It can never change. So um, you just have to be some some people are way more creative than I am. So I definitely don't claim to have all the answers, but you kind of learn as you go. And I think wherever you are, you know, you pray and ask God, hey, what's my next step? Um, and, and go from there, because doing what you're doing, if you're not sharing the gospel is disobedient. So we just, you know, you got to take that step and just honor God to to say, hey, what, what can I do to, to get in that path of being the ambassador you've called me to be and, 
and that's not doing anything if, if you're not sharing the gospel is is not going to get you where you where you need to be so just take that first step and keep going from there yep that's it <laughs> all right well that's good um, thank you for joining me today, Nick and Todd. Thank you, everybody, for listening. If you want resources like going around the corner, you can go to, is it aroundthecorner.com? What's the, what's around the web address? Dot org. Aroundthecornerministries.org. You can go to discoverreallife.net slash engage. We have links there. Um, so just reach out to your neighbors. Think about how to uh, pray for your neighbors. Um, what kind of physical needs they have. Uh, we want to be uh, God's hands and feet, right? That's it. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Thank, thank you. you.